What's up gamers, Lecture here with the Season 2 Sorcerer Update for Diablo 4. Season 2 starts October 17th and is named Season of Blood. It brings a new seasonal vampire theme with a story questline and vampiric powers to boost your characters. In addition we're getting new unique items, paragon glyphs, and legendary aspects, along with updates to gameplay and class balance. In this video I'll be covering the changes that specifically affect the Sorcerer class, and why you should consider playing a Sorcerer in Season 2. Before we get started, keep in mind you can find all of my builds on Icy Veins. They've been updated for Season 2 with Vampiric Powers along with all the changes to items, aspects, and Paragon setups. Let's get straight to the point to what I believe is the most notable benefit to Sorcerers, and that is the additions to Ultimates, or specifically more cooldown reduction for Unstable Currents. The Unstable Currents Ultimate is an important skill for every Lightning Sorcerer build. On every attack it has a 75% chance to cast either Chain Lightning, Ball Lightning, or Charge Bolts for additional damage. And a 25% chance to cast Lightning Spear, which can be incredibly useful to stun all enemies on the screen if expecting to invoke a Lightning Spear. You can also gain 3% multiplicative damage for each active Lightning Spear with Conjuration Mastery. Prime Unstable Currents provides a hefty 25% attack speed increase for more DPS and procs. Supreme Unstable Currents is being buffed to give Crackling Energy 25% faster pulses, which means more cooldown reduction for Unstable Currents and Teleport when paired with Overflowing Energy. Additional cooldown reduction for Unstable Currents can be found with Vampiric Powers, like Anticipation which provides 20% cooldown reduction for ultimate skills. Although this is only a minor Vampiric Power, it only costs 1 pack to activate, making it highly cost effective for Lightning Sorcerer builds. Hetech can reduce the cooldown of any skill by 2 seconds for every 5 basic skills casted. This minor vampiric power stands out for the Arc Lash Sorcerer build, where you only spam the basic skill with high attack speed to proc other lightning skills from unstable currents. And lastly the new Flicker Step Unique Boots can reduce ultimate skill cooldowns by up to 10 seconds when you evade through enemies. These boots even come with the preferred implicit Attacks Reduce Evades cooldown. All these updates in patch 1.2.0 will make it easy to obtain 100% uptime on unstable currents to greatly boost the power of lightning sorcerer builds. So which lightning build should you play? Arclash can utilize many of the basic attack additions in season 2. This build can be considered if you like to rely on random lightning skill procs from unstable currents without having to manage mana. Although hard casting a more damaging lightning skill results in more DPS than a basic skill. The Charge Bolt Sorcerer build has some potential with the update to Piercing Static dealing full damage to the first target hit. But mana problems are harder to fix without it generating crackling energy for Invigorating Conduit. The Ball Lightning Sorcerer build is receiving a buff with Wizard's Ball Lightning generating up to 2 crackling energies per cast, making it even easier to sustain mana with Invigorating Conduit. This build has really good damage since the buffs in Season 1 and it would be a great choice for the endgame in Season 2. The only downsides being it's hard to start leveling, along with its restrictive melee range and bars despawning upon hitting objects. My top recommendation for Sorcerer in Season 2 is the Chain Lightning build. It's the best starting skill for Sorcerers due to recharging aspect, which can be unlocked right away in the Codex of Power. My Chain Lightning leveling guide will make getting to level 50 a breeze, and then the end game guide will continue to carry you through the rest of the game. The only downside of Chain Lightning is the lack of inherent area of effect damage. In Season 1 this was solved with the Barber Malignant Heart, and it looks like Vampiric Powers may provide the Chain Lightning build with enough AoE in Season 2. Killing cursed enemies restores souls that can be released when using a defensive skill, which most sorcerer builds have 3 to 4 of. There's multiple ways to apply the Vampiric Curse to enemies, and a cursed soul's damage can be increased by 200%. Let's take a look at some of the other sorcerer builds that are not lightning based. Fireball became playable with some buffs in Season 1, and there's even more buffs for it in Season 2. The damage penalty on Gloves of the Illuminator is being reduced from 35% to 25% with ideal rolls. A 25% damage penalty means you deal 75% damage, and a 35% damage penalty means you deal 65% damage. So 0.75 divided by 0.65 gives us 1.1538, or a 15.38% damage increase with the change in this patch. The second buff comes from Staff of Endless Rage being updated to give 20-40% to bonus damage for the free projectiles. If you consider the first 2 casts of Fireball, this means that every 3 out of 5 Fireballs will get up to 40% bonus damage. 
So the overall DPS increase of this change is 3 divided by 5 times 40, or 24% bonus damage. Multiplying both of these gains for the two updated uniques shows a 43% total damage increase for this build in Season 2. While this is a pretty sizable buff in damage to bring Fireball Sorcerers up to par, they still suffer from lack of mana sustain. Another fire build that might be a trap is Hydra Sorcerer. The buff to summon Hydra burning damage being increased from 12 to 60% might seem pretty big. But the bug causing Hydra to deal more burning damage than intended is also being fixed. If you are using Summon Hydra at all in the past, you may have been unintentionally carried by the exploit. These changes will most likely make Hydra burn better for early leveling, but worse for the endgame. My last mention is the Blizzard Sorcerer build. Blizzard builds don't do much damage over time, but instead rely on Ice Spikes from Glacier or Aspect to deal damage. And a new Stalagmite Rare Glyph is being added to give Ice Spikes 10% increased critical strike chance. It's a decent addition, but critical strike damage is also being nerfed in patch 1.2.0. The Blizzard Sorcerer still remains a top build for Nightmare Dungeon pushing and bossing. That covers the most notable changes for Sorcerer in the Season of Blood. I hope this helps you make a class decision for the season start. I'm still deciding between Sorcerer or Rogue, and you can also check out my Rogue update video for Season 2. Feel free to come hang out with me while I stream the season start on Twitch. Until then, peace out and happy slaying.